The Mady Spinomed Back Brace, fitting instructions for technicians. Hello. Hi, my name is Dirk Vogel. I am product manager at Mady for the field of orthopedics. In this video, we will show you helpful tips on the proper use of Spinomed back braces. First, we'll briefly look at the anatomy of the back and show how the Spinomed works on patients with osteoporosis. Then I'll demonstrate, with the help of a patient, how to properly adjust the Spinomed brace and the things that you should watch out for. Biofeedback with Spinomed back braces. Patients with osteoporotic vertebral fractures tend to have poor posture. The innovative Spinomed belt system reminds users to take on an upright posture. This process is called biofeedback. Spinomed activates the back muscles and reduces the kyphosis angle. An evidence-based study demonstrates the efficacy of Spinomed, showing a buildup of the trunk muscles, reduction of pain, and decreased body tension. Measuring. To select the specific size of the Spinomed spinal brace, first determine the length of the back split. Palpate the C7 cervical vertebra and starting from it, measure over the entire spine to the sacrum. Make sure that the tape measure follows the spinal curvature over the entire path of the spine. Now that the distance from C7 to the sacrum has been determined, you can decide on the right size of back splint from the product table. Preparation for adjustment. Now comes the adjustment of the back rod. The patient should stand as upright as possible and should be able to make use of supports, for example of a table. Simplify your work by marking the sacrum. This mark is your reference point for the entire adjustment of the back rod. It represents the lower edge of the brace. Setting the back rod. Now the brace will be set starting in the lumbar area. The brace is set from bottom to top following the curvature of the back. As you can see, setting can be carried out without any tools. It's important that you always apply the splint to the marking point to check that everything is aligned. Now set the splint step by step in the direction of C7 until it traces the entire spine. To allow the patient to stand up straight with the brace, a small gap with a width of about three fingers should be kept free between the splint and the body at the upper edge of the brace. Applying the brace. Now the patient can try on the brace. The brace can be worn like a vest. It is a good idea to help the patient put on the brace, especially the first time. Before you adjust the straps to the right length, you should once again ensure that the splint is positioned correctly, starting from the marking point on the sacrum. Then the stomach pad can be closed. Make sure that the bottom edge of the pad is positioned on the pubic bone. The best way to do this is in front of a mirror, so the patient can memorize the correct position of the stomach pad. Now check again whether the front pad is positioned correctly. Ask the patient to help by holding the pad themselves with their hand at the level of the pubic bone. Now pull the lower waist straps on both sides tight, one after the other, so that they fit to the body. This can initially be done provisionally. The straps should not be trimmed at this time. Continue with the adjustment of the straps now by setting both shoulder straps to the right length. To do this, pull the shoulder strap tight using the strap loop. Over the entire course of this step, always ensure that the brace does not slip and that both the front pad and the back rod are positioned correctly. The patient can also help again by holding the stomach pad at the level of the pubic bone.
Now check whether the shoulder pad is positioned correctly. To ensure that the brace will be comfortable for the patient, the V-shaped cutout of the light grey strap cuff should be located at the base of the armpit. To do this, open the Velcro fastening on the inside of the strap and position the shoulder pad as desired. Do this on both sides. On the right, you can see the shoulder pad is positioned correctly. On the left, it is too high. Trimming the waist straps. Ideally, the waist straps should end on the side of the body. To shorten the straps, you can first remove the Y Velcro fastening, as shown here. Then fold the waist strap to the correct length and then provisionally close the Y Velcro fastening again. Now you can trim the strap precisely by removing the Y Velcro fastening again trimming the strap with a pair of scissors at the desired location and attaching the Velcro fastening at the new end of the strap. Now the Velcro fastening is in the right location. Trimming the shoulder straps. After the waist straps have been trimmed to the correct length on both sides, the brace can no longer slip upward. Now it's time to adjust the shoulder straps. As with the waist straps, you can remove the Y Velcro fastenings of the shoulder straps trim the strap with a pair of scissors and reattach the velcro fastening. During this step, please make sure that the stomach pad is not pulled to the side or upward. As you can see, the patient should hold the pad. The velcro fastening of the shoulder strap should now be between the strap loop and the stomach pad. It is important to ensure that the strap can run freely through the loop. Check again that the back rod is correctly positioned. Now you can set the elastic intermediate strap to the right height without any tools whatsoever. To do this, remove the Velcro fastening of the strap and position it at the level of the lower rib cage. When positioning the strap loop, you should make sure that this is located behind the armpit. Only then can the spinal brace have the necessary traction to straighten the patient. Three finger check. To avoid constrictions, you should check that the brace is correctly adjusted by seeing whether you can slide three fingers between the shoulder strap and the shoulder of the patient. Secondly, use three fingers to check the distance between the neck and the upper edge of the brace. This ensures that the patient has enough room to straighten up while wearing the brace. Closing of the brace by the patient. The patient can now put on the brace like a vest themselves and close it using the hand straps on the stomach pad. Ideally, this should be done in front of a mirror so that the patient closes the stomach pad on the level of the pubic bone. As you can see, the Spinomed brace is now optimally adjusted to the patient. Now the Spinomed spinal brace can be worn under a jacket without being seen. a new patient has been treated with the Spinomed brace, improving their quality of life.